Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Christine Dixon of The Ordinary Sacred. And by the time you're watching this, I should be on vacation with my family, but I wanted to make some videos that I can post while I'm away. And so I'm going to do some excerpts from Internal Family Systems Skills Training Manual by Frank Anderson, Martha Sweezy, and Richard Schwartz. I really like these, um, kind of like when I did Martha Sweezy's wonderful a book on shame and guilt. Uh, these sample sessions really provide something for me to jump off of and teach about certain concepts. Uh, whether you are a person who's doing using IFS in your own system, or you are a therapist or coach who's using it, you know, facilitating others, it's really valuable. Okay, <clears throat> so. This one is about self-like parts, which a lot of people have a lot of questions about. I have a whole video, a uh, teaching training video about self-like parts. So you might look that up uh, if you want to learn about what kind, what self-like parts are, different kinds. Um, but this is a, is a sample session and it starts with the therapist saying, would your depressed part be willing to separate so you can get to know it better? Okay, so they've identified this depressed part and the therapist is just asking, you know, can it unblend with you so that you who are not a part can give it attention? And the client's name is Brent. And he says, yes, it will. The therapist says, how do you feel toward it now? Again, this is the big question to assess for self-energy. There's no right or wrong answer, just whatever's true. Brent says, I feel fine about it, which is an interesting response. Um, <clears throat> it could be self, it might not be self, right? So the therapist says, would the part who feels fine also step back? Okay, so the therapist assesses that this is not self and Brent says, sure. Okay, the therapist says, how do you feel toward the depressed part now? Brent says, I feel compassionate. And the therapist asks, is the part able to take that in? And Brent again says, sure. Okay, so the therapist begins to notice that Brent's answers feel kind of disconnected, kind of on autopilot, robotic, right? Sure, uh, compassionate, fine, right? And so at, if you're a therapist or a coach, you can kind of detect when someone like there's not really light behind their eyes. Like they're, they're trying to maybe say the right words that they think they're supposed to say to get, get it going right there. They're like, Oh, I I'm supposed to feel curious. I'm supposed to feel compassionate. So they say, um, I feel curious, but if the person is genuinely feeling curious, it might feel more like oh, I'm so curious to understand why they're, you know, what they want me to know or why they're doing this, right? You can kind of hear in it the curiosity. But what, if they say, I feel curious, that you, you can kind of get that disconnection. So the therapist with this kind of just a hunch, right, says, I'm wondering if you have a part who's trying to help move things along. And Brent says, what do you mean? The therapist says, is someone trying to help? Just take a moment and go inside and ask. So again, there's no judgment if there is. Um, it's just curiosity. It seems like that might be true. You can go in directly and ask. And Brent says, actually, there is. How did you know? There's a part who wants to help you and me. So it says what it thinks you want to hear. This is so, can be very common in sessions. Um, clients, so if you're a client or if you're a therapist, this is helpful, can, again, these are well-meaning parts that just really desperately want to get it right. They want to help the therapy move along. They want to say the right things, do the right thing. Um, often they can be parts that are stuck back in a time, you know, in school when they had to, say the right thing, do the right thing at the right time, you know, or they get a, a big F on their paper, you know, so they, they mean well. 
the therapist says, thank this part and ask it if it would be willing to take a break and just watch us. We'll, we'll be okay, whatever comes up, even the hard things. So the therapist here is kind of preemptively anticipating maybe a concern of this part. There's a lot of parts that blend with us and really think they're us um, and have good intention. They're afraid that if they make space, you're not gonna be able to handle uh, some difficult things that come up because they're just so used to running the show, right? So Brent says, I will ask. Good job, Brent. <laughs> he closes his eyes and is silent for several seconds. And then he continues. I think this part is around a lot. It wants to do the right thing. It's been with me a long time. Um, I, you know, he says, I think. So there may be a, a thinking part, but again, it's kind of maybe surveying and noticing, ah, I remember when this part's been around lots of, a lot of the time and it has good intention. It's trying to do the right thing. It's been with me a long time. And the therapist says, I bet it has been helpful. How do you feel toward it? Again, assessing for self-energy. Brent says, I really appreciate it. Um, this sounds genuinely like the self. So the ther therapist says, let the part know that you appreciate them. Brent says, it likes that. And the therapist says, is it willing to trust you? Um, and again, this is kind of asking if the part is able to recognize that Brent's self is now there and, you know, can, can they trust the self? And Brent says, it's not so sure about that, which makes sense. And the therapist asks a really, really helpful question. How old does it think you are? So this is a, a really helpful question when you or, or a client is, uh, has a protective part that has really been running the show and is considering whether to give the controls to the self or not. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> I don't even know how, what I do that makes these things happen. But when you give the controls to self, I mean, it's like fireworks happen. It's a really great thing. Um, but yeah, so, so we're kind of proposing that to the part. What if you handed the controls over to the self? Makes me think of Inside Out. If you haven't seen it, uh, we saw it this last week in Inside Out too. And, you know, they have this control panel that the parts use to kind of uh, be at the helm. <laughs> it's a different metaphor, but, you know, take the, the driver's seat, if you will. And so there might be a, this part is used to being, you know, leading the system and you're asking it to hand over the wheel right to the self. And if it doesn't know the self well enough, it, it of course it's going to not be sure. It has to gain trust in the self. Um, and so when it says, you know, it's not sure, the therapist says, how old does it think you are? Another question you can ask is, who does this part see when it looks at you? And just have the part tell you who it sees. It, it might say, I see your mother. It might say, um, I see a child, right? Or I see a, a, a rebellious teenager or whatever, right? And that'll give you information about what you, you or the client might be blended with. Okay, so how old does it think you are? And Brent says, 15. And the therapist says, what do you say to that? Inviting the self to, you know, answer that Brent self. And Brent says, the 15 year old is depressed. Ah, yes. This is very common that a protective part, when they look at you actually sees the part they protect, right? Um, this part is confused and thinks that I am him. Um, and it might be the part they protect, or it might be a polarized part. Okay, so the therapist says, does it see you now? Brent says, yeah, it's kind of shocked, right? When you, Whenever you update it, you know, part thinks you're 15 and you're actually 50 or thinks you're three and you're actually, you know, 30 or whatever. It, it, they often express 
shock and awe. And the therapist says, would it let you help the 15 year old? So asking for permission to go to what it protects. Brent says, it's confused by all this. It, it is always taking care of me. So again, Brent is describing this protective part as really having this very self-like role. Um, so sometimes when we refer to self-like parts, it's the parts that are blended with us the most that really think they are us um, because they're just around all the time, right? Like, this is just who I am. This is my personality. This is, um, so for me, a big one was my, my people pleasing fawning part, Cassandra, because she was always out front scanning for what do people want? What's going to make them happy so that I'm safe, right? It just felt like that's who I am. I am a people pleaser, but of course, no, I have a part who's a people pleaser who was running that controls, you know, I had the driver's seat. Um, all right. So the therapist says, yes, it stands in for you. And Brent says, it sort of is me. So again, he, he's describing a self-like part because self-like parts will often say, and no, I am you, right? I'm, I'm such a huge part of you that it just feels like I am you. The therapist says, I hear that it has taken the lead because it had to, and it wasn't aware of the Brent who's not a part. What is it like for this hardworking part to meet you, right? If it's so used to being at the helm and doesn't even have a concept of who you, the self that's not a part is, um, it's, it's kind of, it can be a, a shocking awakening and can be uncomfortable at first. And Brent says, it's really surprised what will happen to it. Um, yeah, this is a big concern, especially of these big protective parts who just been so blended with us they're afraid that if they let the self lead that they will be obsolete they won't be needed they will be um they'll be kicked out essentially so the therapist reassures the protector and says it will not go away it will still be a part of you Brent says oh that's a relief right that's the the self-like part talking and the therapist says yes it's worked so hard Will it accept your help now? Brent says, it's thinking about it. It's very tired. Um, and I like this example because, especially with self-like parts, it can take a long time for them to gain trust. And even, you know, they're so used to running the show. It's like they've practiced it. They've, that's their, their modus operandi. operandi. What's the phrase? Anyway, they, they, um, it's a rut. They're so used to it that sometimes even when they're unburdened, even when they trust self, they'll just automatically like an autopilot come back in and you can just turn to them and say, Hey, remember it goes better when the self is in the lead. Will you let the self lead? And they'll go, Oh yeah. Yeah. Here, let me pass the baton to you. Um, so it, it can initially take a while for them to gain trust, to be willing to rest, but they're usually very tired and want to rest. They just don't trust. So they need experience with the self. Um, so often I will offer experiments. You know, what if you let the self lead, you know, for 10 minutes and maybe they'll say, oh, no, five minutes, you know, kind of negotiate. And then once they get experience with the self that is, non-agendaed and calm and confident and compassionate and really capable another c <laughs> um they gain they gain trust and they much more readily hand over the controls um let's see there's one last note here it says if you feel a puzzling lack of traction in a session or things move too easily you might suspect a self-like part. As this example illustrates, one of the ways self-like parts manifest is by making the client seem cooperative when uh, he is essentially absent. Okay, so again, if you are a therapist or a coach, that can be something to look for. Um, again, you always want to inquire. I like what Martha Beck taught us as coaches to say, I have a hunch 
Um, so in this case, I have a hunch that maybe there's a part that's trying to help you say the right answers. Tell me where I'm wrong. Uh, so I have a hunch, fill in the blank. Tell me where I'm wrong. You let the client be the, the authority of their own system. And in IFS, you might say, can you go inside and just ask and see? And they might say, no, no, I don't. I, there's not a part like that. Um, or they might say, like he did, oh, yeah, there is. And I also wanted to say, because I do a lot of self-therapy in my own system. So from the perspective of what it feels like in your own system, when you have a self-like part, um, and this is, again, this is my experience. And so if you have a different experience, you're welcome to share that as well. But when I'm blended with a self-like part and I'm doing the IFS process, it feels um, there's more angst behind it, more impatience, more agenda. I, it's kind of like, oh, I really, really want to get to the exile. I really, really want to befriend this protector. I really want the, you know, the healing to progress forward. So even if I feel in my body resistance or I feel a part that is not wanting to go forward or blocking the way, a self-like part will kind of want to steamroll over them. Whereas the self in my bot, so, okay, so the self-like part feels to me like a little bit of uh, um, blocking in my throat. Like there's a little constriction in my throat and a like a contraction in my chest area where in that, in that sense of impatience, whereas when the self is leading, I just feel really calm and, and like there's this, just this natural flow and there's no agenda. There's no right or wrong. If there is a part blocking the way, I just feel really curious about it. I don't have to get over here. Um, and it just flows very effortlessly. Right. So, okay. So say that happens. And then I notice it, okay, oh, I there's this pushing self-like part. Then what I would do is essentially the self-like part is blocking the way. So I would try to turn toward it and say, oh, I see you. I see how much you really want to get this done. You really want to get to the exile. You really want to heal. You want to do it right. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you. Will you, are you willing to stand next to me and just see what happens if you let me lead? And sometimes I'll have a concern and I'll meet that. But a lot of times if they know me, the self, they will say, oh yeah, okay. It always goes better. It's always magic when I <laughs> let the self lead. So I will give space. And then the self can go forward in that, that non-agended flowing way, like I described. So um, again, it's just kind of detecting it in your energy, in your body. Um, and again, there's no shame for it. You turn toward it and appreciate it and just say, hey, can you let me lead and, and see what happens? Maybe just let me lead for a certain amount of time and then you can jump back in. You know, those parts are always the boss. We never, the self never steamrolls over them. It's just turns toward them, appreciates them, listens to them, gets curious. All right. So I hope that was interesting to you. Um, if you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below.